Hi, I'm Shanice Goodman. <laughs> the channel if you're new i'm shanice hey very nice to meet you thank you for stopping by and welcome to the good gang if you want to become a favorite family member or a feature goodie all you have to do is turn on your post notifications and you will definitely want to be doing that because favorite family members or feature goodies get what extra love extra hugs and who doesn't love hugs right Okay, so before we go any further, today's feature video goes out to Jay. Jay actually, I met him in person and then he got put onto my videos and he's been a goodie ever since then. So I just want to say shout out to you. I really appreciate you. I appreciate everybody who supports me, who is part of the good gang. Now, girl, let's go ahead and get straight on into the day. So if you guys, if you're a lady, and you watch, if you watch me, if you watch people like Love Your Natural, like Asia C, how even Jackie Aina, you might see a lot of femininity videos popping up. Now is not the time for ice cream. So you might see a lot, a lot of femininity videos popping up. And this has been brought to my attention that I, Believe it or not, I have a lot of masculine energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that, that has been brought to my attention. Who would have thought? But let me just say, the reason, first of all, let's get into what is masculine energy. Masculine energy is defined as traits or energies that would typically be associated with men. So things like, fighting, being aggressive, being combative, typical, stereotypical traits of men by society. Nobody else other than society. So since this has been brought to my attention, I have really, really been trying to, I can't say it be more girly because I am naturally girly, but I'm, I've been trying to play up on my femininity a little bit more and be less aggressive and less just be more open so to speak because whenever men approach me i always feel as though i'm going to war like it's about to be a battle it's about to be a fight i just feel as though i need to put on my armor to defend myself against whatever they're coming at me with because let's be honest bro some men don't have the best intentions for you they just want to come soak up your good looks your good energy and leave you with filth so needless to say whenever any guy approaches me especially if he's new like if i've never met him before it's automatic warfare in my mind like it's just a battlefield it's like so hence the masculine energy now i tell you guys about this story briefly in a video because I uploaded a podcast called Trust the Process and that was a part of the conversation in that podcast. So let me just tell you guys the story very briefly again so you are caught up and that you are up to speed on what is going on here. Now, a few weeks ago, I'm at work and this, it was not one of my best days. It, it wasn't. I was very, very frustrated at work. I wasn't making... I wasn't doing what I needed to do. Like things were just very slow. It was just a bad time for me. So I was frustrated with myself and then in turn I was frustrated with the company because like, I was not getting where I wanted to, to go. So I was just all around frustrated. So this guy, he comes into my office and he's very, he's so nice, so nice. We always chat and stuff. And he's vacuuming for me, right? So I think this was the first day that I met him. But he's vacuuming and we're chatting, but I'm leaning up on a counter, like looking out through the glass. Now, as I'm looking out through the glass, I have this terrible, terrible frown on my face. And this guy, let's call this guy Wade. That's not his name, but we'll call him Wade, okay? He walks by and he's an attractive guy. Um, attractive in, in my eyes, at least. Nice dark skin, natural hair going on, like 
cute guy. He looks at me and he smiles or, or he does like, but he does something to get my attention. And I'm just like, because like I said, I was frustrated. I didn't feel like smiling. I didn't feel like I just wanted to be in my frustration. So he comes to the door and he goes, now what has you looking so upset? Why are you in that mood where you have that face? So I said to him, you know, I just simply don't want to be here. I'm just frustrated and I want to be frustrated right now. So he gets to talking to me and he asks me, well, what if I make you smile or something along those lines, something to start a conversation and then to kind of break down my barriers to let us know that we are not on a battlefield. I think that's what he's trying to do. Obviously, he does not know that this goes on in my mind, but that's that's what I chalked it up to, okay? So we get to chat here and I eventually smile because I mean, like, you guys know me, I laugh at everything, so... I eventually smell barriers come down well to a certain extent and we chat he says to me you know have a good day I hope that you don't go back to being frustrated I hope that you smile or whatever I will chat later or whatever I introduce myself he introduces himself boom he's gone now the next time he comes in he's talking to me and he's telling me that he raises chickens and that's his own business and then he's telling me about presents that he's planning to buy for his significant other or friend or his child or adult, whatever right so that's the that's the conversation that we're having and then he gets to asking me you know what are your goals in life i do not know why people why people ask me that oh yes because i said i was frustrated with her and it probably said something like girl i'm ready to quit my job I hope that nobody from my job is watching this. <laughs> but I probably said something along the lines of, you know, I would really like to do, get into this field, but in a larger scale, yeah? But it was very, very vague. Because like I told you guys, I go off vibes, I go off energy. If I don't know you, I don't care to explain my aspirations to you. Like, I just don't care. Who is it that said if they don't know your dreams, they can't shoot them down? Kudos to you, whoever said that. I don't know if it was J. Cole or Kendra. One of the two of them, two legends, let's move on. So he's talking to me about his careers and goals and stuff. And then he was like, I would like to know what you would like to get into. But then he had to leave because I think his day was coming to an end. So he left. And then the next time he came back, um, my colleague was there with me. Now, he then tried to tell me again he would like to know more about you know what i'm trying to get into and basically so i was like well you know we, we could chat about it another time so he was like okay well you have a good day he left the fourth time he comes back i think that this is time number four now yeah the fourth time that he comes back he basic basic greetings you know hey how you doing how you been did you enjoy Christmas? Because now we're coming up to New Year's Eve, Old Year's Night, whatever you want to call it. He says to me, are you going out for Old Year's Night? Now, at this point in time, I probably said to him, you know, I'm not really a party person. I just really go to go to work and back home. And that's really it. I probably go out like once every blue moon. And he probably, I think at this time, it came up in conversation. Well, hey, do you have a boyfriend? Like, are you single? And I'm like, yeah, I'm single. Just focusing on me. Ugh. And sometimes, I will tell you guys, sometimes I do lie about it because society, again, when you reach a certain age, is like, well, you're supposed to have all of this. And if you don't have all of that, by a certain age, I'm going to give you all of this shit. And sometimes I just lie about it so I don't have to hear it. He did, he didn't, he was aware that I was single. So when I said to him, I don't have any plans for all years night, he, he goes, he says, wait, how old you is? Now, this was his version of throwing shade, but I didn't catch the shade, right? So I said to him, I said, I'm 36. He was like, I know, but I just mean, you don't go, you don't party, you ain't got no boyfriend. I can see what kind of woman you gonna be. I've already said to him, you're stressing me out. So he's still on his rant. I can see what kind of woman you're going to be. You're going to be successful by 30 little bit, lonely, and miserable. 
you should have had a child by 25. <sighs> now you guys, let's, let's go back to what I said in the beginning. Now you guys see when masculine energy comes out, what I feel as though when any man approaches me is warfare in my mind is like armor goes on don't come at me do you guys understand what i'm saying now this man don't know me from jack sh and here he is giving me all this personal advice when he been knew me for all of five minutes you should have had a child by 25 I just want you guys to know, it's not all men that are like this. In no way am I making a generalization, because I hate when people do that. I'm not making generalizations. But I'm just very cautious with who I let into my space. And it was only until my friend brought it to my attention that I have a very high level of masculine energy, that I really did some introspection to find out why do I have that masculine energy. But it's protection. That is what it is. My masculine energy is protection. Now, do I like it? Absolutely not. Because I, like you guys know, I am the girliest of girls. I speak like this. I play around with my voices and stuff like that. I love to do it. I talk with my hands. I think I'm super, super feminine. But when I feel like danger is on the horizon, I have no choice so at this point in time i've already made it clear to him that he's stressing me out so that was warning for number one for me now after he said to me you should have had a child by 25 and he went on his rant but about the kind of person he thinks i'm gonna be i said to him you know what i've had enough of you please see the door i did not say the words get out i did not see it say the words leave because I'm not at home. I'm at work. I cannot put anybody out of the people's company. I said, can you see the door? So that was left up, up to interpretation. But I was hoping that he interpreted it as get out. Girl, if this shot is blurry when I'm editing, I am going to have a connection. So after I said to him, can you see the door? Let me tell you how the door in my office works. It's a very, very safe office. You have to enter a code to get in. And you have to push a button to get out. Now, there are two buttons. There's a button directly by the door so that the person going out can press it and pull the door and leave. Or there's a button by my desk so that I can push the button if the person does not see the button by the door and I can allow them to get out. It will unlock the door, basically. Let me paint you guys a picture of how the office is set up. The door would be here, he's standing here and the button is there, and my desk and my chair is situated back here. So he's turning this way to talk to me, and I can see the door, obviously, yeah? And the button, my, my button that's closer to me is on my left side, yeah? So I said to him, can you see the door? And he turns and he's like... He's in shock. He's in a state of shock. He's in disbelief. He is flabbergasted, as am I, because... So I kid you not, this man waits a good, I want to say one minute and 30 seconds before he actually leaves. So it was just a very, very awkward situation. Like, I asked him to see the door. He kind of pivots to face me, but not really. So like, I don't really know how to, uh, to estimate. He's kind of standing like this, like looking at me, like in shock. Like I, he cannot believe that this, what seemed to be such a soft kind of girl, just asked him to leave. So as he's just standing there, I'm pressing the button. And whenever you press the button, the door will be open for probably about eight seconds before it closes again. And when it closes, you're going to hear it. So it's kind of like this. Press button, eight seconds, press button, eight seconds, so it's kind of like that, so I pressed, <laughs> so I pressed this 
button at least four times and I'm not giving him my attention at this moment because after I said see the door I was over him and I was over it so I'm in my phone now so I'm pressing the button but I'm in my phone but obviously I can still feel his presence there so he's just like are you serious I was like And he's still standing there. And I'm just like, wait. You just offended me. You know that you've offended me based on what I've said. And you're still here. You're not apologizing. I'm not speaking to you. So you're just standing in my office just saying nothing. Nobody else is there to interact with you. So what, what are you doing? But I think at this moment, he was so embarrassed. He was so shamed. He was so shocked. That I said to him, kindly to the door, like he just, his brain, is like his brain couldn't process what was happening. So fast forward, let's say about two or three days passed after this incident. Eventually he did leave, let me put that out there. He did leave, I didn't say bye or, I think he said have a good day and I just was like still in my phone. So fast forward about, let's say two or three days, he, he was situated at the entrance of the building so when i was leaving he was there so obviously i'd have to pass him i pass and i kind of have this this conflicting thing going on because if somebody offends me and they work with me i kind of don't want to make it a a tense environment so i try to keep it harmonious but i also want you to know that like I don't fuck with you. It's that simple, right? So I'll still speak to you, but you, you're you not going to feel the warmth. And I honestly believe that like, I'm such a warm person. Bitch, when I'm cold, call me Anna or Elsa because I'm frozen. So I'm passing him one evening at the entrance of the building. I'm leaving. He's still at work. And I just said to him, good evening i think it was him and probably his colleague so I, I just said good evening and i went along the next time he seen me i was sitting closer to a window of my office not by the desk like i told you guys previously and i seen him coming so i seen him and we kind of made eye contact our eyes made for and I look back down because I don't have anything to say to you. Like, it's just that simple. I don't have anything to say. So I just look back down. And he's walking by. And after I look down, this nigga gonna take it upon himself to step back. If the window is right here, he goes back around to the window right here. And stands and stares at me. Now, he didn't make a noise or anything like that. But I saw when he went back, and when he went back, I'm looking down in the process of him going back. So you know when somebody is staring at you, you can feel a presence, you can feel them looking at you? I felt that. So I looked up, and he goes, you play that, you ain't looking at me? I didn't hear him say that, but I read his lips, and from all of this, I was just like, Phew. so that was that. So I think that he got the message that, I don't fuck with you. It's that simple. So he went on his merry way, and I'm sitting there just like. <laughs> now, the second time that I had to pass him at the entrance of our building, I didn't say anything because now you're playing with me. You're playing with me. You're trying to get a rise out of me. So I'm just going to give you dust. I'm not paying you any attention. I'm paying you dust. So I just walked by. I. Say it was, yeah, it was him at the entrance. Say he is standing here and his colleague is standing there, obviously going out. I pass him first. So I walked by him in silence, paying him dust, like I said. And when I got to his colleague, I was going, good evening. And I went on my merry way. Now, at this point, like I said, I'm a very warm person. When I'm cold, frozen. At this point, he definitely got the hint. <laughs> So I'm sitting in my office one day and I hear like the, the glass of the, my office door, he's tapping on it like with his fingernails. So I hear that and I look up and I look up 
and I just look because I am debating should I let this man in and the professional side of me is saying to me Shanice this is not your home this is not your property you cannot grant nor deny somebody access to this this office unless you feel as though they're a threat no he was a threat to my emotional well-being but how am I gonna explain that to my boss because he could be petty and be like, you know what, I tried to go in this, this office to get something done and she would not allow me in and I want this looked into. So I was just like, you know what, press the button and the door opened. So when the door opened, obviously he heard it because button, eight seconds, All right. <laughs> so he opens the door, he pushes it and he comes in. He goes, Shanice, how are you? I said, I'm fine. Because in this moment, my brain is, my brain is at work now because I'm heated. I'm trying not to hold a grudge, but warfare, battlefield. So he goes, I seem to have offended you, but I'm not sure what I did to offend you. I said, you don't know what you did to offend me? Then he goes on to say, the last thing I remember saying was that you should have had a child by 25. I said, so you didn't think that that was rude? I'm telling you guys a lie. I was not this calm. My decibels went up a little bit, probably like two notches, what the, two and a half, okay? It went up to two and a half. So I said, so you didn't think that that was rude? My brain now is just screaming at me, Shanice, be a lady, feminine, femininity, please. So I said, you didn't think that that was rude? This man is going to allow me to know He's going to allow me to know that I am crazy by saying to me, he was not speaking about me personally. He was speaking in general. <sighs> do you guys see this whole masculine energy? Do you, do you understand it right now? Because at this point, I'm not trying to be not masculine. I'm trying to not be a monster. Because he is boiling my blood. It's boiling like I can feel it boiling but how are you speaking in general when we were talking about something personal and I'm still lying to you guys because I'm not this calm I'm just delivering it calmly to you but at this point the blood is boiling and the decibels are up to notches okay I didn't know that you thought that I was meaning you personally I would never say that I was I am not somebody who judges somebody else i am not a person that judges other people i don't judge people that is not me so i will not be speaking to you like that and telling you those things about your life so at this point my my, it, my blood is not it's not boiling anymore it's it's, it's kind of vibrating like it's not boiling it's vibrating like I feel like boiling is like a volcano and then like vibrating is an earthquake so like a volcano is about to erupt on an earthquake like that's what's happening inside of my being at this moment that he is telling me about generalization and personalization that is what is happening right now I need to calm down because I'm getting upset again and I hate getting upset I think that anger is a wasted emotion but you know what my friend said to me Shanice let it go don't hold grudges just channel it channel it somewhere because i was so angry like my shoulders and everything like were hurting he was like she needs to channel it somewhere so i'm channeling it to you guys on my channel so you can enjoy it okay <sighs> so then i said to him let me remind you of what you said you said to me you should have had a child by 25 I can see what kind of woman you are going to be. Successful by 30, love a bit, lonely and miserable. Now at this moment, this is what he's doing. <gasps> are you kidding? 
like he is in complete disbelief as though I just pulled this information out my ass. And I am sitting here like, this is manipulation. Scratch that. There's a more specific term for it. This is gaslighting 101, okay? This is gaslighting to a T. If you don't know what gaslighting is, here you go. This is it happening live and direct on Completely Shine. Now, at this moment, the volcano and the earthquake, like, they have simmered down. Because I am now in an elevated state. I'm going to rise above you. Because you are going low, so I'm going to rise above, okay? I am just like, well, this man must really, really believe that I am a dull, dull girl, that I have no sense of intelligence. I say, you, you don't remember saying that to me? So no, he goes back on his spiel about how he does not judge people and it was just a generalization. And I asked him again, how could it be a generalization when we were speaking personally? Because when he asked me about all years night, I said, well, how do, how do you know that I don't have work to do? On all years night? Really? That is what segue to, I can see what kind of woman you're going to be. You're going to be successful by this age and lonely and miserable. He asked me now, and I was just wondering why, why you haven't been speaking to me. So I just came to see how you were doing. I said, I'm doing fine and I don't need checking up on. Huh? He said, I know, but I just wanted to come and see. I said, but don't you think that it would be completely asinine to say something like that to somebody? You don't know me. You just met me. You don't know what people go through. You don't know their goals, their accomplishments. You don't know what struggles are stopping them from reaching same set goals or accomplishments. And here you are blurting out all of this shit. Like you have no sense. And he goes, oh, so that's why you haven't been speaking to me or why you've been walking past me. I say, yes, because I simply had nothing to say to you. He was like, but you could have said something. I said, I said what I wanted to say, which was kindly see the door. Oh, you real rough though. Now at this point, I am just, everything that I believe is just like kind of like hitting me in the face. Like Shanice, you are not crazy. Like all your feelings are justified. They are totally, totally valid. Like your barriers, like, they are justified, okay? They are completely valid at this moment. Because here this man is, he offended you, he did you wrong, and the way you responded, he's not telling you that you were wrong for responding like that. That in essence, that's what he's saying. I said to him, I simply have no time to interact with people with that kind of negative energy. And he goes, Oh, but once again, I was just speaking in general. I didn't mean to offend you. I said, well, the next time you say, if we ever have a conversation again, I implore you to say, Shanice, or whoever you're speaking to, this is not personal. This is a generalization. X, X, X is my opinion. So now he goes on to say, well, I'm sorry that I offended you. I'm sorry if what I said offended you so my brain is trying to calculate was this a real apology and then he goes on to ask me do you accept it now the masculine energy is still totally very very high right now the monstrosity in me is and i said to him i don't need an apology i'm fine he goes, I know you don't need it, but do you accept it? I said, mm. because at this point, I'm still very, very over him. I think that he's a horrible, horrible human being at this moment. And there is nothing you can do to change my mind. Because usually I give people chances, but that is after I have built some kind of friendship with them. With them. This spiel rant of him, of his came after having four, probably 50 minute or less conversations. So you don't know me. I said to him, you don't even know what my last name is. I hear you are pushing all of these 
generalizations, as you put it, on me. When I get upset and all these words start coming from nowhere, I am just, my brain is just like flabbergasted. Implore, what else, what else do they say? Asinine. Implore and asinine are not words that I would typically use on a regular day to day basis. So when I said it, I was just looking at myself like, bitch, you don't even know what those words mean. Where did you find those words from? Did you even ever hear those words in your life? How do you know these words? I shot myself. You know what? You can't poke a bear and then tell the bear how to respond. It just does not make sense. You can't do that. But yes, this was my story on how this is just another why me moment. All this talk about femininity and stuff like that is cool, but you know what? I feel that as black women, we have such strong personalities, such strong masculine energy, because we have no choice but to. We have to fight so hard for ourselves in situations as simple as this. Trying to play mind games with me, trying to mind me, like what are you doing? Who sent you for me? Go back. Because I was sitting in my office, calm, cool, and collected, a little bit frustrated, and you took it upon yourself to come in and meet me. I didn't ask you to come, so go back. But now, I am conflicted because he asked me, do I accept this apology? And I said, hmm, but I don't want to speak to you. I just, I don't care to. My life was fine before you came in. You didn't add any value when you were in my life. And... My life will probably be better after you leave and continue to not speak to me. I can promise you that. So now, I'm in this weird space of, do I see him and just say good evening? And when he tries to carry on a conversation with me, what should I do? This is the point I'm at right now because even though this is a story time, it happened very, very recently. So things are still going on, you know? But I want you guys to comment and let me know. First of all, did you enjoy the story? Do you think that he was really trying to manipulate me? And if he was, sorry, gaslighting me, why? Like, what was his purpose? I don't know why men do this to women. I feel like this would be a very interesting topic for a future video. So look out for that. I'm gonna work on that for you guys. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Girl, don't let any man, any woman, nobody make you feel as though you are crazy. Don't let anybody gaslight you. Look up gaslighting and look up manipulation tactics to find out what they are and what the most common traits of these manipulative tactics are. And just stay woke, educate yourself, and when people come to you with that kind of BS, just walk away, okay? Walk away, run, run for the hills. What What reason do you have to manipulate people? Like, seriously, seriously though. But yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and share with a friend. Check out some more fun videos right there. My last upload right here, you guys are really gonna enjoy that. Subscribe to me by clicking my face. And I will definitely see you guys in the next one. Remember to be completely you. Stay woke. Know that your feelings are valid and love yourself. Bye, guys.